Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now when I first reviewed the Intel Arc A750 almost two months ago, I said that you'd have to be willing to take on the role of early adopter if you bought one. The drivers were the biggest letdown and the performance of each game was a bit hit and miss. It was older games that suffered most, particularly those built around older APIs like DX9. I've got to hand it to Intel though, they have released numerous driver updates since and it's clear that they are serious about being truly competitive in the graphics card market. Today I want to talk about the performance of the latest drivers at the time of this video, the driver version that ends in 3959 compared to the 3490 launch drivers because this software brings with it perhaps some of the biggest improvements yet. For example, Intel have specifically named CSGO, a DX9 title that really struggled beforehand, as one of the games that has seen improvements, and that is an understatement. When I first tested it, the game was a stuttery mess, and even though I was playing against bots in that initial benchmark, things didn't really change against other real life players, and I played a couple of free for all games in Dust 2 today with the OG drivers just to confirm that. Now though, well, look at this. Performance has more than doubled with the latest driver release. I've put the performance stats up on screen from the launch drivers, which I retested today as well for comparison, and the difference really is night and day. CSGO players no need to longer I really messed that up. CSGO players no longer need to avoid ARC graphics if they want competitive and consistent performance. I didn't actually expect such a drastic improvement to be honest. Modern Warfare 2 is also named as a game that will benefit from the newer drivers and this is of course a DX12 title. So are things better here? Well, it's not as much of a significant change as we saw with CSGO, but the game does perform slightly better on average and it's more consistent as shown by those 1.1% lows. I should add that all of today's gameplay has been taken from the A750 externally using the latest drivers, but for the figures I ran the in-game benchmark tests where applicable of course. Modern Warfare 2 does actually feel a bit smoother as well, which is important. It's not just a case of slightly better numbers, the user experience has gotten better. What I want to do now is try a few other games as well that don't have any specific patch notes about them. They're just ones that I thought I'd throw in to see if performance has improved elsewhere. Cyberpunk is first up and once again we have the performance metrics on screen for the current latest driver gameplay as well as the figures taken from the test with the launch drivers. I didn't do a side by side today because going into this I thought that it would be a bit of a non-story with minimal performance gains across the board so I was half expecting to scrap this video altogether. If it was just Cyberpunk I was testing that may have actually been the case because there are no notable performance gains this time around. The percentile lows are very slightly better but it's within sort of margin of error territory. A bit of work is still needed for Cyberpunk and ARC graphics in my opinion. In Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, performance actually got a bit worse frame rate wise, but this is bittersweet because beforehand, and pretty much with every other driver apart from this one, the game did this weird flickering thing where we get these strange red and blue glitches all over the screen. You might be able to pick it up if you go back and watch my original review. I think I tested Spider-Man. Anyway, performance may be a bit worse, but I'm prepared to accept this fact as the graphical glitches and artifacts have been cleared up. This is one case where performance is worse, but actually better. Grand Theft Auto V actually performs better now as well. This is a DX10, 10.1 or 11 game depending on the API you choose from the settings menu, but I always choose DX11 where possible. This was a little bit problematic with launch drivers, but seems to run a bit better now with improved percentile lows as well. It's a very nice improvement here of almost 20 FPS on average, but with that said, the occasional dip and stutter is still present. The game doesn't drop as much or as often, but I noticed that some issues do still remain, especially when racing through particularly densely populated areas 
of downtown Los Santos. There's not much to say about God of War, there's no built-in benchmark, so I just played through this boss battle twice with each driver version. This makes it less accurate, but both times I recorded better percentile lows with the latest driver release. While it doesn't perform any better on average, the game is a little more consistent it would seem, so this is still a welcome improvement and one that will make the game more playable to some. Stutter and frame dips can often be more annoying than a lower than expected average frame rate, so it's always nice to see things improved in this department too. Finally then we have Red Dead Redemption 2, this was running with Vulcan which is my preferred way to play and many others I would assume. I can't speak for any DX12 improvements here, but what I will say with Vulcan is that the game exhibits possibly the smallest change in performance that we saw from all of today's tests. That said, I did notice some weird lighting effects got fixed. Before with the OG drivers, I'd see the occasional flickering red light or artifact through certain saloon windows in Valentine, and this seems to be cleared up now, which is good. That's why I featured Valentine in the footage, just to show you that the issue does appear to be resolved. So there we go. It seems Intel Arc GPUs are already getting better thanks to new driver updates. This new driver is effectively like downloading extra performance or a better graphics card, at least for the A750 in a few games. How the A380 and A770 are affected, well, I'd love to know. Perhaps leave a comment if you have one of those and have any noticeable performance changes to report. The ARC A750 now seems like a much better buy, but just remember that it does still work best with resizable bar enabled on supported systems, so it still isn't for everyone in that regard. It's also worth considering what other cards are available where you live and at what price, because in terms of how this thing compares to say the RX 6600, you might find that that is ultimately the better deal and you are getting more reliable drivers as well. I think the ARC is definitely something for people, well, like me, who are willing to take on that early adopter role and enjoy seeing progress happen pretty much on a month to month basis. We have seen some really nice improvements from this update and hopefully the card will continue getting better along with others in the ARC series lineup. Thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this one leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.